everybody and welcome to Board Game Inquisition where we're here to offer you insight and information about your board games. So this is the monthly roundup for April. This month seemed longer than other months. Does anyone else agree with me? It feels like a long time since I've had a chance to sit down and have a chat with you guys. And for those of you unfamiliar with this monthly roundup format, firstly, welcome. It's great, it's great to have you here. Um, and this is the, you know, the video where I sit down once a month and I basically just have a chat with you about a couple of things that have changed in my board game collection. Um, mostly because I think collections are really, really important and it's very much the focus of what my channel is about, improving your collection and making it your own. Um, and so I kind of, I sit down and I hash out, you know, what, what's been going on in my collection. So if I've acquired any new games, any trades I've made, um, what else is on the list, games I've been playing and then of course there's a wish list as well at the end of it. And I really encourage you guys to play along or if you're a content creator why not make your own version of this video. I would love to hear other people's monthly roundups. Um, Board Game Rants, um, if you don't follow him already, does a monthly roundup as well similar to myself. With the, He has an MVP in the month and I always think it's really exciting to hear and see what everyone else has been playing and it gives you great ideas for you know games you might like yourself. Hmm. So I think this, I think it's a fun thing to do. Um, anything else to say before we get started? Don't think so. This is the, the video where I just sit and kind of have a chat with you. Um, so it's one of my favorites to make um, because I don't have to learn any lines or prepare anything for a change. I just get to tell you all the good things. Um, and I guess we'll just get started then. I don't want to waste your time. Um, so the first portion of this is usually um, new games we've acquired where I've acquired. I have a tendency to use the word we a lot because it's only myself and my husband really who play games. So I, we, you know, we play games, I play games. And, um, so in this case, um, I usually lament the fact that I've bought too many games. And over the past, I wanna say, you know, maybe a year, I've bought a lot of games. There's no two ways about it. I don't feel bad about it. Um, I genuinely feel like there were, it wasn't like I was buying stuff for the sake of buying things. I was buying things I genuinely wanted to play and wouldn't have had access to otherwise. Now we're very good about trading our games and things like that here. If we don't like something, we'll swap it, we'll get something we do like. So I never feel like it's a terrible waste. And as my better half always points out, if you play the game three times and still decide you don't like it, you got your money's worth out of the game, you know. We always compare board games, you know, to, well, how much would it cost to go to the cinema for a night? Um, and board games you keep forever. So often, you know, that, that's how that's how we weigh things out. And I've been buying I've been buying a lot of games and I jokingly say every month, oh I should stop buying games. Um, I said so last month. But this month I'm here to tell you I did buy no new games this month. Not an iota. Um, and that's not something to be applauded by the way. This wasn't entirely um, on purpose. I didn't stop buying games despite me wanting games. I stopped buying games because I kind of, I got to the point where there was nothing else I was really interested in getting my hands on or that I could easily get my hands on, if that makes sense. Um, not to mention, I feel like our collection really is almost at the, is at the top end. I don't think I'd want it to get any bigger than it currently is. Um, because collections, you know, are about treasuring the items you have in them. They should be important to you. That's how I always understood a collection. Otherwise, you're just buying stuff. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going too far out of my own comfort zone when it came to how many things we owned and that everything we owned, I actually wanted to be there. So instead of buying new games this month, it meant um, we played a lot of old games and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so yeah, so funnily enough, the first start of this is, oh, I bought no new games. Now, uh, there's a bit of a caveat. Technically, I have two games that arrived this month, but that I bought the previous month. And I may as well tell you about those. Um, so the first is Java. This is a game from Michael Kramer and Kiesling. I can never remember Kiesling's first name, that's terrible. These two team up a lot to make some really fabulous games. They're currently my new favorite designers. Um, like separately, they've done amazing stuff. Together, they've done brilliant games. And I've had a copy of Mexica for a while. I don't know, you probably heard me talk about that last month. So they have a, a series of games, like a trilogy that's called the Mask Trilogy. Um, Mexica, I believe, is the second or the third in the trilogy. And we liked it so much I wanted to get the other two. Now, these are quite old games. I have the old editions with the gorgeous box 
art on them. Um, I'll put up a picture of that. I took a picture of it at the time. And so when I played Mexico, I was like, I really wanted the other two. Um, and so at the end of last month, we managed, we bought two copies. We bought two copies. They're cheaper because they're, they're old games. These are from like the year 2000. So they're ancient. Um, but you know what? They're still amazing games. Um, so Java and Tikal are the two ones that are, are missing or the other part of the set. I've only played Tikal so far. Um, it's a Spiel des Jahres winner, which is, you know, tempted me in. And it's a very interesting area control game, um, where you, which is also exploration. So basically you're claiming towers um, or, um, you know, like Mayan temples kind of for victory points. And each turn you place a tile on the map and it reveals more places with more temples. Um, it's very simple um, in rules and breath, but it's got a lot of depth to it. It's super, super clever. Um, and we really, really enjoyed it. Um, so the third game that's in this series is Java, and I still haven't got to play it yet. Um, Gaming Rules said it's got some uh, very wacky rules, so it's probably why we haven't got to it yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. It's also got a very exciting box cover as well. So technically new games, but not really for this month. <laughs> <laughs> but still bought nothing this month. Okay, so apart from that though, there have been, I have received games um, that I'll be reviewing soon enough on the channel if you want to hear about those. So the review copies that have arrived, um, pretty much most of them came in the last week or so. So the first is going to be on Kickstarter in the next month, I think, or two. It's in one of the J months. I probably should look it up. And it's called Six Gun Showdown and it's from Red Wild Games. So Six Gun Showdown, I've played it once now, I want to play it some more. It's kind of like <laughs> a bluffing game, I think I want to call it. Basically you and your opponent are in a shootout and you're to, trying to, you know, shoot, well, to, to injure each other. Um, and you have a set of cards in your hand and you can basically, one of which is the bullet. Um, there are bonuses then to add to the bullet to make it more likely to hit your opponent. Um, you can also put negatives on your opponent's bullet. But the trick is deciding when to fire the bullet because if you shoot er too early, they might be able to stop you. The longer you wait, the better kind of um, enhancements you can have to your shot. However, waiting too long leaves you kind of open to being shot at. So it's that kind of game. It's very interesting. It looks very good. Um, I'm looking forward to playing more of that and I'll probably be doing kind of a playthrough video for that just to show you how it works because I don't think it's one that I could break down well into three things. It's kind of a fun um, and interesting game. Um, so that's um, a six gun showdown. Keep your eyes peeled for that. The second things that arrived are from Dragon Dawn Productions. I'm not familiar with them. I'm looking forward to seeing their stuff so far so good. Um, so they sent me two games. Um, one, The first one is called Black Hat. And it is a hacking game. Yes. <laughs> I don't own one. I don't own one. I'm sick of hearing people go on about uh, that renegade game where you hack into things. Um, and I thought this would be really interesting. It's a trick-taking game with the hacking element. It's unusual. So you play, you know, a hand of cards, um, like trick-taking game, then you play until somebody plays the top card or you can't take a trick anymore. And the winner of the trick gets to move across a board um, and this board kind of represents you hacking into a secure server and the first person to get like, to get all the way hacked in wins. Um, so it's an unusual take on trick taking, um, I have to admit. I'm looking forward to trying out more of that too. I think the board is very pretty and the cards are really nice so it looks, it looks quite good. Um, so that's kind of exciting. And then the second thing that they sent me is a game called Perdition's Mouth Abyssal Rift. And man, that's a monster of a title and a monster of a game. Um, it comes in this huge, big box. It is a dungeon crawler with miniatures. Hey, I've never had one before. Uh, so I, f I found this one to be particularly exciting. Um, it's definitely on the gory side. Um, the art is all kind of gruesome. So are some of the models. The models are gorgeous. Uh, do you ever have a model in your hand and go, man, I really should paint this? It's been a long time since I've wanted to paint something. Um, so yeah, it is a very interesting dungeon crawler that works via a roundel. Um, that's how you choose your actions and what you're going to do. Um, there's a ton of maps in the box. I was very fortunately sent a deluxe edition, so I seem to have got an ex special Witch's Grotto expansion in it, which gives me extra characters and extra maps and extra scenarios. It runs on scenarios. And we played like three games of it back to back at the weekend. And the first place, you know, you have to tell yourself is let's not just compare this to Gloomhaven. And we're trying very hard not to. It's definitely in a different category. You know, it kind of reminds you of something maybe like Hero Quest. 
Um, it reminds me more of a role playing game than it does of a board game, but I kind of enjoyed it. I have to admit, it was definitely getting more difficult the more missions we did, so I'm curious to see what it'll throw at us next. But um, you should be seeing full reviews for those um, eventually, sometime soon, hopefully not too far away. I need to get a few more games of those under my belt. So, okay, that's all the stuff that's new and shiny that arrived. Get on to the trade part now. So, I did manage two trades this month, so technically I acquired more games. Yes. Um, and it's crazy, you know, with trades is that you have to pay to ship the game to somebody else and they have to pay to ship the game to you, right? And because we're in Ireland, and I only discovered this this morning, I'm sure my husband has told me this ton of times, he kind of takes care of trading. Um, to ship something to the UK costs like 15 euros, which is often more than the price of a game. So I didn't realise how much it sucked um, having to ship things uh, for further, well, slightly further away. England's only over the water. Um, and it costs them less to ship things to us. And I'm just like, God, that's... <laughs> it's, it's interesting how postage and board games interact. Nobody knows that, like the receiving of packages and stuff like that. Um, there's this whole world, suddenly you get embroiled in the postal world. Um, but yeah, so I got some trades, but I'm still appalled, you know, at how expensive um, it actually is to trade games for us, um, despite the fact we still do it anyway. So first things that we traded for, we traded away our copy of Flick 'em Up and acquired a game of Key Flower. Yes. Um, so we had Flick 'em Up, the dexterity game. It was in a wooden box. It was really nice. We never played it. Um, I think it would like. I think it's a very good game actually to be honest just don't think it was so good at two players and then when you added more players there wasn't enough people for all the people to play I don't know um I do think Flick 'em Up though is still a very cool game it just wasn't one that really suited us and also we paid like a tenner for it a year ago so I think we got a good deal here when we got a copy of Key Flower now Key Flower um there are a whole bunch of key games in the series of Key did you know this um I knew this <laughs> I've seen them pop up around the place. Um, I really wanted to try one for ages because they are kind of the epitome of Euro games. They're very much like cubes and, and such. And I quite like that. I have nothing against cubes and such. Um, and, but I really enjoyed Clee Flower. It really surprised me. It was very clever. Um, you would bid for tiles to place in your city and then they would have abilities on them. And you would use those abilities to get items, to get your victory points. You know, very Euro gamey. But it was super cute and pretty and quaint. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a head wreck. It was really kind of just relaxing. It's really weird, isn't it? Um, and I won. <laughs> I never won at Euro games. Um, so yeah, I just, I chose well, I think, and I stuck with my particular strategy and it worked, but I really, 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 really liked it. Um, so Key Flower is looking good so far. It's now on the pile of games that need to be played more than once, but we got one game in of it. Um, the second trade we made is we traded away our copy of Targi, which I got over Christmas, for Lanterns. Okay, so Targi, we played Targi once. Um, so Targi, is, those of you who don't know, it's basically like, how do you describe it? So you've got like a rows of cards that all have actions on them and you get to place a guy down and perform the action on the card. Now, the truth is you place two guys, both of you, and you get to perform the action where their rows intersect. It's not easy to describe without seeing it, as does your opponent. Um, and the aim, aim of the game was very much to kind of collect sets and stuff like that. It's actually a really nice game. It's just, it's rather long, I think, for what it is. It takes about 50 minutes to play. Um, and while we liked it, we were never really encouraged to play it again. So we decided to put it up for trade and see. And we acquired Lanterns. Now, Lanterns is a game that was introduced to me when I first started this channel, um, I went to my best friend's house and she was helping me sort out all the stuff with my software for making videos because I had no clue what I was doing. And we also played a game of lanterns. I think I brought um, Azul with me at the time, I can't remember. And we, we played it, we played game, we played games together and she taught me how to play lanterns and I instantly liked it. And I, since then it's been on my for trade list and it's only like literally, you know, in the past week or so that I finally managed to trade for it. 
Um, so what's Lanterns all about? I hear you say, well, um, Lanterns is a tile laying game with set collection. And what you do is you have these, basically you're putting floating lanterns in the water and you want to match up the colours. And when you match up the colours, you get cards of that particular colour and then you can trade them in, you know, three of a kind for so many points, four of a kind for another. Um, basically that until you run out of tiles. It's simple, it's easy, it's very, very pretty. And I'm super delighted to have it in my collection. It's one I really, really wanted to get my hands on. Um, it's like, I don't know, an e an e a nicer version of Carcassonne. That's what I would call it. But I know Carcassonne has got way more going on than that. But for me, it's just, it's a special game. So I'm really delighted to have it. So I've been doing a ridiculous amount of talking. So d what new games did you get this month, if any? Did anyone else abstain for the entire month on purpose? Um, that would be really cool to hear about. Uh, or, or did you manage to do any trades? I think I'm unusual in the fact I do a lot of trades, right? I don't know how many other people do trading. Um, if you do, raise your hand. <laughs> Yeah, and say hi, but I'm curious to hear what you guys have got or what you've been playing because that's always really exciting to hear. Okay, so that's all my traits. Ooh, it's going to be one of the quickest actually monthly roundups in a long time, I think. Um, okay, so the next thing to talk about is games I've been playing. All right. Ooh. So because I haven't bought any new games, it means I'm finally tackling my shelf of shame. Um, I actually made a Facebook live video about this last week about the shelf of shame. Um, so if you want kind of more details, I suppose you could go there. Um, but the short hand of it is, is that when I get a game, I usually will play it straight away. I'll play it once. Um, and then it goes into the shelf of games that have been played once. And we've been working our way through this shelf to play everything three times before deciding whether we wanted to keep it or not. Um, and because there was no new games this month, it meant we really had the opportunity to kind of delve further into this shelf. Well, like this middle shelf here. <laughs> um, pretty much the majority of this middle shelf. Now, I do have some games that are entirely unplayed, um, but that's for very different reasons. Most of those are because they have rather large rule books or they take quite a bit of time to play. Um, things like that. Or they're games that were kind of donated to us and we're not hugely eager to play them yet, so hence why they're there. But anything new I buy always gets ripped open straight away or anything we trade for usually as well. So what did we play this month then? So I'm gonna to talk to you about the games that we relegated to the keeping section or to the not keeping section to try and give you guys some insight. Um, so the first thing I think that we relegated um, might have been Newton. I think it was Newton. So Newton is um, partially designed by Simone Luciani. He He's a guy with a lot of his games. Um, we really, really enjoy his games, normally speaking. And uh, we started with Grand Austria Hotel. We have a copy of Tolkien. We also have Lorenzo, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And his games all have a very similar vibe where there's, you know, there's usually multiple victory tracks and stuff like that to keep track of. Um, new this one I've been really excited about for ages because it seemed to come out in the States, but not really in Europe. So it was really hard to get here. And my husband managed to get a copy, um, he managed to pre-order a copy and, ha and have it arrive. So of course we were super excited. So we played it three times and to be honest, we weren't particularly impressed. I think the problem with Newton is that it's a very detailed game. Um, there's a lot going on in it. And if you make one mistake, you can kind of shoot yourself in the foot for further mistakes. Um, it punishes you quite a bit. It's got some very unique mechanisms. I, I, lo I love the way they do the turns. So basically on your turn, you'll have a handful of cards with symbols on them. And each symbol um, allows you to perform a particular type of action. And when you play it, you put the symbol down on your player board. And at the end of each round, you can tuck one under the player board. So you have a bonus symbol for next time round. And I think it's just so clever. The problem for us was that Newton just had one too many things going on. And it made the puzzle very unfun, if that makes sense, to solve. Um, cause just because there were so many elements and you really couldn't keep track of all of them. And focusing on one of them um, instantly left you kind of bereft of um, a way to win. It was, it's very, it's just one idea too many. There's just too much. And we were like, it was this fun to play. You know, we played it a few times. And I really like a lot of it. I just, as a package overall, I couldn't see us playing it often just because it, it wasn't fun to solve so Newton got relegated 
So the second thing then we played, we went through a bit, um, was Wild Lands by Martin Wallace from Osprey Games. Um, Wild Lands, I think I've talked about this maybe even last month, didn't I? I might have done. That was just a game that, <sighs> it's kind of like a, a dungeon, a dungeon crawl, but not really. It's an area control game, I suppose. And in it, you are seeking out your crystals before um, everyone else gets theirs. So it's kind of a combative thing. Um, it just didn't work well at two players, we felt. That's, that's the truth. It might just be the area control games for us at two players isn't great. So that was relegated. Okay, next thing. We'll talk about some happier ones. So, Not Alone. This is a very small box game from Stronghold Games. Um, my husband picked it up ages ago and I was like, what are you thinking? Um, but, you know, it's got Stronghold Games on it. It's, it's probably okay. And it is a very small um, card game in which you are a human stranded on an alien planet and you are waiting for the dropship to come pick you up and you need to survive before the aliens get you. Hmm. Um, the way the game works is that there are a series of locations. Um, one of you plays the hunter and one of you plays the hunted. Apparently this game plays up to six or seven players. I don't know, we've only played it one on one. Um, and I've always been the hunted. And basically um, the hunted decides secretly they're going to go to one of these locations and the hunter has to try and guess which location they're at. Um, yeah, that, that's, ba that's basically it. Um, so if you are successful in not being hunted, you get whatever special abilities on the card. And at the end of each round, your marker moves up a track, you know, closer to the ship coming to save you. Um, and then the hunter gets better abilities the closer you get to the ship arriving. Um, so ways to like, you know, um, lock out three cards or something like that instead of one. Um, it's not only something I, I would have considered that considered us to enjoy or to be okay at, to be honest. Anything normally where myself and my husband go head to head and there's kind of hidden information, um, it never works out well. Um, I have to say this did. I'm surprised. I've managed to beat him, which is really unusual for me. Um, but it's not only that, it's very fun and it's very quick. Um, I think it's it's one of the better games where, where you where you do this, where there's like the hidden, where like where are you kind of thing. Um, it definitely worked well for us, so that definitely, that got promoted. So that was not alone. Next on the promotion list is The Voyages of Marco Polo. Hey! For those of you who've been following along for some time, you know I wanted The Voyages of Marco Polo for ages. Um, and finally I got around to playing more games of it than just one and you know what I really like it um, sure we always find we're very tight for money I feel like we're missing something we find money is super hard to get um, maybe until the later stages of the game but definitely at the start making it very difficult to travel around the map um, so Marco Polo is basically kind of the Silk Road um, game it's a, it's a dice game where you get to choose your actions based on the number you rolled on a dice and you're moving around the map and there are different kind of bonuses and things to collect depending on where you get. Um, you play as a particular character and they're all busted. They all have great abilities. I have to say, that's the one thing I love about the game. Everybody's amazing. Um, and it's just really fun and chill. It's a nice, it's a nice puzzle to do. Um, and this was also designed by Simone Luciani. So I think this is infinitely a better game than Newton was. Um, but I'm just, I'm glad I got to play more of it and we really, really liked it. So it got promoted. And I've anything else on my list. Um, the other thing, other, anything else we've been playing a lot of, playing a lot of Reef. Reef is the game I think that doesn't get enough recognition. Um, it's an abstract puzzle game with very chunky and very cool pieces. Um, and you're basically trying to match patterns. Um, but this is in three dimensions. Woo! Yeah, I think there's, I, I, over time I definitely prefer it to Azul. I haven't pulled out Azul in ages. I think Reef is actually the better game. And I've played a lot of us all. Um, but it's just, you know, when you want something fun and easy. And it's the kind of game that you don't even mind if you don't win. Because it was just a lot of fun to do. And there's something about touching those components um, that really adds a lot to the game. Which is a really kind of odd thing to say, I guess. Um, but that's how it goes. So that's what I've been playing this month. Um, yeah, I'm finally digging into the older games. It's great. I, we also played Blue Lagoon as well. Um, that only needed one more play and it got promoted despite me being terrible at it. It's an area control game but with, with like little discs and you make trains between islands. Um, I think that's a great, it's a great pro approach to area control. It doesn't feel like they're regular games. And also it's just gorgeous. It's so well put together. It's just really nice. It's a pleasure to play it even though I doubt I'll ever win. 
Um, so yeah, working, working the way through things. What else do we do? Um, Tricarian is another one. We've had that for a really long time. We've had that game for nearly a year and we played it once on the kind of the basic mode. Um, we didn't mind it, it wasn't too bad. It's a, it's a work replacement game at heart, is what it is. Um, we played with the advanced rules at the weekend, we played with the other side and while it was okay, it's not a terrible game, it was very long. Um, you know, you play seven rounds instead of five rounds in the non-basic version. And it just wasn't something I suppose that we were like, when are we going to get this out again? Now, the truth is, I quite liked it. I liked it quite a bit, but I just... I guess that's what happens when you have a large variety of games to choose from. That it makes competition very fierce for other games. And we've had Tricari in a year and I didn't feel like pulling it out again. Do I feel like pulling it out today or tomorrow? Probably not. So it's gone to, down to the trade pile. I think I've almost decided that Mind Clash games maybe are not my thing. Um, this is the second we've had from them now that just, you know, wasn't amazing. They definitely hit the itch for some people, um, but I just think for us they've never really been quite right. Um, and I'm sure they're fantastic games in their own right, as I, as I feel that actually about most games that we choose not to keep. Um, I think it's just because there is, you know, we, ha we have a lot to choose from and, you know, space is a premium. And when we get rid of a game, it's never because it's a bad game, it's just because that... <laughs> you guys know what I mean, right? It's, it's never because it's a bad game, it's just not the right game for us right now. And I very rarely say that a game is truly, truly awful either, because, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Um, <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? Just because I don't like it doesn't mean somebody else is going to. And that's why in my reviews I try my best to tell you everything I can about the game. So that you can decide, well, okay, you know, she might not like area control, but I love that stuff. So that, that game's going to be great for me. Um, so yeah, so rotating through the collection, I think, is a really important thing for everybody or anybody to do. I wonder, you know, would you ever set yourself a challenge to play through, you know, a certain amount of games that you feel, you know, needed more plays or you haven't got to yet? That would be a very cool challenge to set. I would love to hear if anybody's ever tried it. Um, I look forward to getting through the rest of this row soon. There's some really great games here. We're kind of leaving ourselves down now to the ones that take a little bit more time. Um, we're trying to get rid of the quick ones early. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much what we've been playing. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys have been up to. Um, please, please, please do tell me in the comments below. I want to I wanna hear everything. Um, and I hope that, you know, your collection is something that you think about once in a while and see where you could like improve or take something out or whatever it is. Or, or maybe you have the perfect collection. I, I would love to also hear from you if you have that. You know, where you have a little bit of everything and it's just enough. And I think that's very, very possible to do. So finally, um, any news from Board Gaming Quiz itself, the channel, just to talk about what's been happening in the last month. Um, there's been more episodes of the Tabletop in Inquisition podcast, um, for those of you who don't know. We try to put that out roughly every second week or so, no real pressure. Um, but it's just a podcast where myself and Tabletop Games blog um, sit and have a chat about the games we've been playing. We're trying to go through um, some game terminology and explain them in our own words. Um, we're kind of bad at that. And then we talk about some sort of topic. So like their latest episodes, we talked about the cardinal sins in rule books, or at least what we felt they were. Um, so if you're into podcasts, maybe it'd be great if you could check it out. We'd love some feedback. You know, we're only beginning. Um, it would be exciting to get some more news. Um, so far, so good um, with everything else. I've been still putting out videos as often as possible. I'm putting out two videos a week at the minute. Now, mainly one's an unboxing video. Um, so that's a little easier than most. But um, I hope that people find the unboxing videos helpful. I know some of you watch them and um, a lot of you don't. And I'm just curious to know how do you feel about unboxing videos? Um, and do you like the fact that I'll match the unboxing video on the Monday with the game I release on the Wednesday so you can have had a look at it beforehand before you get to hear the review? Um, I'd love some feedback on that. That'd be really helpful because I'm not sure how well that works, but uh, who knows, who knows? Um, yeah, so there's going to be some more big reviews um, coming up. I'm looking forward to that. I already have pretty much all of next month ready and filmed to go. And there'll be some exciting things. I hope you will come along and watch them. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it for me here at Board Game Inquisition. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and if you'd like to do anything nice, why not like or subscribe to the channel? I'm pretty sure most of you are, right? Why would you be here if you weren't? Um, if you want to do something nice, you could always just tell a friend I exist. You know, the more people I can reach with about board games, the better. 
Um, or if you're interested in supporting me in other ways, I have a Patreon account. I really don't like to talk about it because it makes me nervous with money from strangers. But um, every little bit really does help. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. I don't expect anybody to have to pay for what I do. But every so often, the little bits help for paying for the bits and bobs. Um, so yeah, that's it. And until next time, I'll be here playing games, asking questions and of course perusing my collection. Take care everybody. Bye bye.